Okay, we're here in Unity, and we're going to cover reverb zones. We just covered a little bit about how to do the footsteps, and they were too dry. So we need to add a reverb zone. Now, a reverb zone in Unity is fairly self-explanatory, but it's a zone in which audio sources that are playing will then have reverb characteristics added to them as interpreted by the audio listener object. Now remember the audio listener was attached to the first person controller, if you want to double check that. See if we look at our first person controller and specifically at our camera, main camera here, we have an audio listener. And that's where you're getting all of your 3D sound basically from. So what's gonna happen in this case is when an audio source of any kind happens to be within the boundaries of the audio reverb zone, it will then have audio reverb characteristics. So in order to be able to add a reverb zone, it's pretty easy to do basically. There's uh, one of the few objects that you can actually find on the game object menu. You can also of course add this to an existing game object, but unlike some other situations where we had an object and then we had to add a component to it for audio capabilities, this is not the case with a audio reverb zone. You can get it under the game object menu under create other and it's right down here, Audio Reverb Zone. So if you do that, then what happens is you're going to look at the situation and uh, just to mention the component situation, you can do Audio audio Reverb Zone here too. But we've already created our game object. It already has the Audio Reverb Zone added. And as you can see, an object was created in the hierarchy called Reverb Zone. So let's cover the parameters of the Audio Reverb Zone itself. Take a look here at the min distance and the maximum distance. These are also represented by these points on the sphere. This is quite similar to the audio source that we saw in our last videos, essentially. So what happens is in this case, you can adjust them by clicking and dragging here if you feel like doing so, or you can also set the variables inside here by hand if you want to. So now what we want to do is position the reverb zone and to select the appropriate preset. So what happens is that the presets are available here under the inspector for the audio reverb zone component that's added to the reverb zone object. And we have a list of several different ones. They're scrolling off the page at the moment, but if I were to take the inspector out and sort of have it float around, we can see all the different settings. I might mention that the user uh, object or the user preset here allows you to set up your own settings for the reverb that you want. There's way too many parameters to go into in, on this particular one here, but keep in mind that you cannot save presets in Unity Free. This is the version that we're currently using is Unity Free. So what happens is that in order to be able to save presets, you're going to have to buy the Pro version. Another issue with reverb zones as they are applied in Unity Free is that a reverb zone is going to show up as a spherical shape. Now, if you happen to have a situation in which the sphere of the audio reverb zone is happening to be larger or is crossing boundaries between walls, between rooms, then that means that on the other side of the wall, the reverb zone will still be active if you happen to have a character walking around in that space. Now, if we were to, let's say, get our little uh, fly-through mode and go through this wall and take a look here, we don't have anything on the other side of this wall, so we're good to go but it's something to think about when you're in Unity Free because there are no audio filters, as we mentioned before. So there's no way to create a blockage of any kind on the other side of this wall so that this reverb zone doesn't, isn't, isn't active on the other side. So your choice at that point is to bring it forward so that it's inside the space mostly and you know hope that the character doesn't get, doesn't get too close to the wall because at that point they might experience some reverb. Let's check this out and see if this works at all. So we're going to check our minimum distance at about 12 meters with the max distance at 15 meters and we're going to call our res uh, reverb preset stone room which is a fairly bright reflective kind of room. First thing that we'll do though before we give it a try is we will take the fluorescent light sound which is rather lo loud and deactivate it currently just so that we can test this out and just hear the reverb from the footsteps only. So go to the file menu, save the scene, and give it a go. All right, 
So as you can tell, we're walking around, and as we get close to the stairs, our sound is pretty dry at this point. And we might want to have a little bit more left. But as we're here in this space, it feels relatively authentic to where we what we're looking for. But what we probably want to do is adjust the, the boundaries of the sound. And to do that, we'll get out of game mode and we'll bring it a little further forward. Set its max distance to a little bit more, maybe more like 17. Give it a little bit further and save that and give that a go and see what happens. Yeah, it's still pretty dry when we get to the bottom of the steps. That might be still one of something we want to kind of see if we can deal with. Uh, I'm going to incline at this point to make my max distances larger and larger and larger. So I'm going to make it more like 20 meters. Okay. So as you can see, that's your basic idea there. How we can get around this. And you're going to have to compromise a little bit with Unity Free because of, again, the, you know, if you make it too big, then you might have situations in which the sound reverb area could literally go all the way through here. And so you could be walking in this area, which obviously isn't, it's reverbing, uh, and, and have the same kind of characteristics. And you can put as many reverb zones as you want inside the space, it doesn't matter. But as you kind of get in and you walk through, it should, it should basically increase a little bit more. So that's your basic idea about how to add reverb zones inside Unity. We're going to get into scripting in our next video, so stay tuned.